everybody, welcome back to the channel. Thanks for tuning in for today's episode. And it's another good one. And it has to do with taking techniques that work for other species, meshing them with our love for chasing bass and trying to come up with a way to entice more bass into biting, which will allow us to catch more fish, hopefully. And today's episode is just that. You know, I think in the past you've seen how I like to add flash to baits. I've done a video on putting a, a blade in front of a Carolina rig, which is really kind of similar to a uh, like a walleye uh, crawler harness rig. And I think I've, I've done videos in the past about adding blades to stick baits for when you're pitching around a, a bait in the grass, you can get that flash from the blade, something that's really popular down in Florida and in different areas around the country that have uh, good grass populations. And I just love to add a blade, you know, not a giant blade, just a small blade to create some flash, create some vibration, and it gives that appearance of bait fish. You know, just the flash, I think, is enough to draw fish into the bait that you're utilizing. And today's tip is just that. How can we add some flash to baits that we've been using? And I think what we've seen over the years in the Great Lakes area, up where I live, that a lot of the guys who are out trolling for salmon and trout on the Great Lakes use what they call a flasher. It's a big metal board in front of a fly or a bait that swings in the water, creates a lot of flash, gives the fly movement, and it draws the fish into it. And that's what today's tip is going to be similar to. So what, you know, something that my buddy Mike Weiss, who you've seen on uh, one of my other episodes, we did a, a smallmouth fall uh, fishing episode he's a really good friend of mine and he loves tackle he's got you guys think i've got a lot of tackle that guy's got a lot of tackle and one thing he's always doing is paying attention to trends that are going on around the country and one of the things that he's brought to my attention was how guys are taking big glide baits this is a you know the big swim bait uh the the swim bait guys out there are taking their big swim baits and in front of the bait they're adding a small blade and the small blade is creating vibration, creating flash, and it gives the appearance of that big swim bait chasing the blade. And I do love to throw swim baits, and it's something I've played around with and had some success, but it's not just for swim baits. So as an example, this is what I'm talking about. You can take a bait, you can then mount a, a blade in front of that bait to create flash and give the appearance that your bait is chasing a small bait fish. The swim bait guys, guys have been doing this for a while where they're, they take a blade and they take two bobber stops and they connect the blade in between the bobber stops so it, it can swing freely, but the bobber stops mount it where you want it to be. You know, I would say three to five inches is a good length in front of the bait uh, because if it's too far in front of the bait, you'll create flash that's too far up and the fish will key in on that flash. If your bait is three or four inches behind the blade, the blade's creating flash, but when the fish are brought in, they see your bait and they, they strike your bait instead of the blade. But what I've found over the years of doing this is that it's not just a swim bait thing. You can do this with like every technique that's out there. So I've done it now with, you know, in this case, this is a topwater bait. You can do it in front of the topwater bait. So as you're working this, the blade is spinning and flopping around and it looks like you've got a small fish chasing a minnow that's jumping in and out of the water. You can put a blade in front of a chatter bait, in front of a swim jig, in front of a swim bait. You can pretty much literally put that blade in front of any style of bait. I have found that with a uh, crank bait, it works. A, it doesn't work quite as good just because it can create lift so you don't get the same diving distance out of your crank bait. But it's one of those things that just creates flash and it's something that's a little different that the fish haven't seen. Uh, but for me, I've really had good success with it in putting it in front of a swim jig and putting it in front of a top water. Those are probably two of my favorite ways to do it. Uh, but it's such a simple thing. You know, all you really need, you can buy kind of pre-made ones on the market. So these are like uh, the owner flashy accent spinners. And again, these are the, the same spinners that you would put on the back of a stick worm or a plastic bait or you can mount them into a, a, a swim bait to create some flash. That's really what you're looking for. And then you just need some sort of pegging system to lock it in in the front and the back. Uh, it's a real simple process. You can adjust it. You can take it off your line really easily. Does not take a ton of time to, to update. Um, but just something that's worth trying, guys. And these stupid, 
these Fusion 19 hooks are so sharp, they stick to everything. So in this case, you know, you can see you've got your blade in front of the bait. It's just something worth trying. I mean, it really is something that I think you guys will see. It gives your bait a different presentation and it can create those uh, instances where if you do get some some muddy water or some turbulent type water, that little bit of flash can really make a difference. Uh, and I will say, I find that you generate some good strikes this way. You know, I think anytime you've got bigger fish in the area, and this is probably why the swim bait guys love to do this, but if you've got, if you can create, you know, the, the idea that this bigger fish is chasing a little bait fish, the big fish that are keying in on, on baits this size, see that as an opportune time for them to take advantage and feed on this bait. It's really similar to like, if you're, if you're watching bluegill, if you throw your bait to a dock, you'll see bluegill swim out and grab your Senko or your stick worm, whatever it is that you're throwing. A lot of times, if there's a bass in that dock and they see those bluegill swim out to feed, that's when the bass will try to feed on the bluegill. They're opportunistic feeders and they're taking advantage of the prey that they're feeding on, losing consciousness of the game fish that's trying to eat them because they're trying to eat their little bait fish. So it's something we're trying guys. It's really a cool little concept, very simple to do. Most of us probably already have the blade and the bobber stops in our tackle box already. So you really don't have to spend much money doing it, but it's something worth trying. I recommend it, go give it a try. It's not just for big swim baits. You can try it on pretty much any technique that's out there. That's one of the cool things about it. So guys, if you enjoyed this video, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already and stay tuned for tomorrow's tip.